the devotees uh, moved here in uh, July 80. They all came from basically from Amsterdam. Amsterdam was a city temple, so there was a desire at that time to have a far farm project. And we started to develop uh, the gardens. We had a very uh, good gardener at that time. We started with the cows, we started to renovate. Get up, Jama. Get up. Get up. Yeah. Although we bought the project as a farm project, because it is situated in a touristic area, it uh, naturally started to attract uh, tourists. Yes. On the guided tours I do, um, we start with the um, slideshow room, uh, where we show basically a general information, a little bit of the history of the castle, because it's quite an old castle, it's mm -hmm. from the 13th century really. So then after that we go to uh, the two living rooms, the blue room, so after which uh, we enter the temple. This is really the highlight of the whole guided tour. Uh, there I give an explanation of uh, what we can see, you know, the altar. Then we leave the temple room and we go up on the first floor and there we visit Prabhupada's room. There I say a little bit of the story of Sri Prabhupada in really short, uh, concise. Until now we had like 500,000 uh, people visiting Radha Days who received uh, guided tours and then we developed a restaurant, cafeteria, bakery, boutique and that has been very instrumental in uh, making this place uh, sustainable. Then we go to the tower and uh, we have like 47 hectares of land, mostly is forest. I showed them the garden, uh, the buildings. The celibate monks, they live in the castle mm -hmm. and uh, the families and the couples, they live around like in this building, mm -hmm. in different, in small apartments actually and uh, even some on the hill and, the s and uh, across the street. Yeah. So some work in cooperation with the temple mm -hmm. and some work outside. Yeah. The church used to be part of the castle, however it's uh, been given by the people before us to the village, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was also, yeah, nice, they used to have some boundary walls and so all of this I explained from on top, we see the cows. So then I showed them the development, like of the bakery, the restaurant, the boutique, the shop, yeah. the museum that has come now mm -hmm. and uh, the extension guest house. As you know, this Hare Krishna movement was uh, started by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada had many different activities to spread 
this understanding of the Vedic philosophy. And one of them is through uh, vegetarian food. So at the beginning it was mostly with uh, a travel agency, bus company, they, they start to come regularly and uh, we know in advance when they will come and they, they were doing a tour of the, the castle and every time at the end they were coming to the bakery and we start by distributing like this a lot of bread and also we start to make some cookies and uh, it picked up quite quickly from 2000 around. We, had, we are working more with individuals, many people from around who come or tourists in the summer or holiday vacation. It's become more like uh, the bakery, a bakery for the local people, for people who have their house here. And now we have a lot of customers who come regularly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, or sanctified food, food which is offered to Krishna is uh, so popular that yeah. um, after some time there's coming so many people you can hardly handle it. Mm. So yeah, we definitely have a good experience. <laughs> we actually have several local people who come here only because of the kitchen. Because they, they think it's, the food is so nice. Yeah. Uh, the French uh, area of Belgium here is a quite conservative area. Mm. But, uh, but those who come and eat, they bring other people. Yeah. We have many groups. We have people coming from everywhere, you can yeah. say. I did many services in Radovish since I came, came in 1988. But one of the stories that I did for the longest period and really developed as much as I could is the boutique. Oh, yeah. uh, I went many years to India shopping. The boutique was very much uh, instrumental in helping Radadish to raise funds and, and be, be able to maintain the project. Radadish is a nice place. People like to come and spend a good day with their family and their friends. They can come to the shop and discover Indian handicraft. And uh, we have a big variety of uh, items. You can pick a present for your family. It is uh, very important to us that every person who comes and visits our shop feels very much welcome. We have all kinds of clients. We have local people, we have tourists. Then uh, with the guided tour we go down to the bakery. Everyone gets a cookie, uh, some little history about that building and uh, that's how we really end the guided tour. So usually in, during the week we start or between 7 and 8, it will depend on the days if there is buses or not. And on the weekends we might start a little bit early because uh, we have to prepare more things like uh, I'm making little rolls, pain au chocolat, pain au raisin. I'm preparing different stuff you will see on the, yeah. on the desk. And then we have four kinds of breads we have to prepare for the weekends. Country bread, olive bread, walnut bread, and raisin bread, mm -hmm. and the cookies, of course. Yeah. Recently now, the Museum of Sacred Arts has come up with very high-class uh, pieces of art in the form of paintings, sculptures. How did the art museum come about? Well, the background is that uh, we've been talking a lot in Radadesh management 
how to you know have some attraction in Radish they can they can bring tourists. That it came from that side to have something that they can attract people, they can link us with the tradition in a in a real sense mm -hmm. and with India. And then from there I started to go to India and purchase a few paintings and it started kind of small. It's about linking with with our roots, with our Vaishnav roots. It's linking with many wonderful Vaishnav artists that exist in India to mm -hmm. to the present day. Traditional or contemporary. I mean mm -hmm. I even opened up to contemporary art because of this project. It's not something that you see very much, devotional art. Then we also have the Bhaktivedanta College, and which is an educational uh, program in uh, theology. Well, the college began officially with a course which was accredited by the University of Wales Lampeter on theology and religious studies. But prior to that, in the early 90s, Radhadesh developed as a centre for education in ISKCON, particularly with casual courses, seminars, and also the VTE, the Vaishnavan Training Education Group, started here in, I think, 1992. Well, I think the college is based on a couple of important principles. The first one is that ISKCON is primarily an educational institute, and that its purposes are largely educational, albeit it's about spiritual education. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I think the broad principle is there that a, a reflective, thoughtful approach to religious commitment is, is very useful. And that actually in, inquiry and reflection enhance our religious commitment. We moved to Radhadesh in the end of 95 because the service we developed was expanding, we needed more facilities, England was too expensive for us, Radhadesh offered these facilities and so we came and uh, moved into a very wonderful devotional community. We were developing a service, if you say, to uh, supply the devotees with Srila Prabhupada's teachings. Well, it took us three years to establish the mail order, the shop, and the working relationships with the extended team that we were developing. Uh, then in 2001, we started the Bhaktivedanta College, which ran through BLS, which was a seed project, which has developed now into a very successful uh, educational initiative. Also the guest house was a very nice development which came at the right time and which allows the congregation to come and stay with their family, nice facility and, and come for some uh, retreat. It also allows us to do programs, bhakti yoga program, cooking courses, etc. What happened for me is that I, I've grown up here in Radish. Since I'm born, I've, be, I've been here. And uh, we were given the opportunity from a, a young age to you know, grow up with a few, uh, a quite a few of us youth in the same age group. And we were always well surrounded in terms by our parents. We always received a very nice education. We also are, are brought in a, you know, in a philosophy that really educates us in, into a certain style of life. I've learned to really love it so, a lot because there's a lot of things within it that attracts, you know, that, that is attractive to me. Mm -hmm. Just as, uh, for instance, one thing I'm very much involved in is uh, kirtan. 
We do um, singing with all the different youth. We do this every evening here, and it's one of the key, uh, how do you say, activities for us over yeah. here. Please tell us a bit about the Radadesh Kirtan weekend. It really, really attracts a lot of people, very much from all of Europe. We have over uh, 50, 50 different countries that come to the festival now. We even had, uh, this year, we even had some people fly from South America and from America mm -hmm. just for the festival. Okay. If there's one thing within our philosophy, within our religion, within our activities that attracts the youth more than anything, it's definitely the kirtan, the music. Another uh, point is the wood heating. Since one and a half year now, we have this uh, ecological wood heater with a biomass wood heater, which is burning a waste product from the from the carpenters. It replaces uh, completely the uh, the burning of, of oil, which is then um, very ecological and also which is financially very helpful to our community. Yeah, Radnades could uh, still develop in, um, in several aspects. I think the Bhaktivedanta College has a lot of scope to, to further uh, develop. Radnades can be like a center of education. That potential is, is certainly there. Then also on the level of uh, self-sufficiency, there are possibilities. I also feel that uh, there is a change in, in, in mentality. In other words, uh, there is more openness for devotees to get uh, involved in self-sufficiency and, and cow protection. <laughs> 